Hey y'all, this is the shape matching element method for direct animation of curved surface models. Suppose we want to produce a physics-based animation from this NURBS model of a bouncy castle. For instance, maybe we would like to see what it looks like moving in a gentle breeze. The standard physics-based animation pipeline requires that we first convert our curved surface model to a piecewise linear triangle mesh, then tetrahedralize it, and finally simulate it using something like the finite element method. While this pipeline is effective, the meshing step can be slow. Here, taking upwards of five minutes for this relatively simple model. It also introduces hidden restrictions on model creation. Here the artist wasn't aware that Tetwild cannot handle co-dimensional features like the character's collar, leading to a troublesome output. In this paper, we present a way to quickly create volumetric physics-based animations directly from NURBS models without any volumetric meshing. This significantly speeds up the modeling and animation pipeline and produces plausible, physically-based results. It takes only three seconds to set up this bouncy castle simulation using our algorithm. Importantly, our method is compatible with the same set of material models and integration schemes as the finite element method, but tightens significantly the connection between modeling and simulation. In our work, we use NURBS as our boundary representation, including both patches and closed primitives such as spheres. We make no assumptions on the connectivity of these patches. We support input with gaps between primitives, self-intersections, and even completely disconnected parts. This allows artists to model freely without needing to worry about the hidden limitations of downstream volumetric mesh generation. The basic operation at the heart of our method is shape matching the process of computing a polynomial deformation that minimizes the geometric distance between a shape and a deformed counterpart. Importantly, because shape matching computes a polynomial over space, we can measure the deformation of our shape matched object at any point in its volume, even though our input is just a surface. This is a powerful notion, but a single polynomial is pretty limited in the deformations it can produce. Previous methods dice up the input geometry against a regular grid. But ideally, our solution would be input sensitive, driven entirely by the input surface model, and avoid introducing any additional volumetric grids. Instead, we take advantage of the part-based nature of our input, given a motion like its deformation. We can construct local approximations by performing shape matching to individual pieces of the model and blending them together. We note that each shape matching polynomial serves the same purpose as a finite element shape function, extending the deformation of a local part of our model into the volume. Hence, we call it the shape matching element method. The key to our method is that we implement both blending weight computation and volumetric integration using ray casting. This allows us to avoid any volumetric data structures. We handle pathological geometry by performing constructive solid geometry operations on the fly during ray casting. This allows us to derive and implement the Euler Lagrange equations for the blended kinematic description, leading to a flexible and robust physics animation algorithm. The combination of blended shape matching and ray casting means the shape matching element method meshlessly produces physics based animations from some pretty wild meshes. See our paper for more details. We start by showing the results of a 2D patch test. Here we rotate, stretch, and shear a square model of four disconnected lines. We show that our approach correctly reconstructs the interior deformations of the object from just the boundary input. Here we show the results of simulating a Neo-Hookean cantilevered beam using the finite element method. The FEM mesh contains over 9,000 tetrahedra. We then simulate the same geometry with identical material properties using our approach. As we increase the number of parts from 6 to 10 to 24, our method qualitatively approaches the FEM solution. Our method is robust to large overlaps in modeling input. The handle of this coffee mug has been carelessly attached by jamming it into the coffee cup body. We see that even in this case, our method can produce plausible physics-based animations. Here's the same simulation viewed from above. And if jelly coffee mugs aren't your thing, we've got you covered. Our method supports a variety of material models and parameters which allows us to robustly simulate large deformations like this twisting beam. And to simulate complicated geometries like this squid. We can also simulate heterogeneous objects like this wheel. 
The outer layer is made of rubber, while the inner part, steel. And the simulation behaves accordingly. This x-ray view lets us see that indeed, the inner rim of the wheel deforms rigidly. Our method doesn't support thin shells as such, but it gracefully incorporates them into the volumetric simulation and doesn't break their geometry. This means that we can produce plausible animations for this challenging geometry while preserving the model's appearance. Here we see another example of how the shape matching element method handles disconnected parts. Because we can compute elastic energies for discontinuous deformation, these geometric issues aren't showstoppers. When modeling this rocket ship, the artist forgot to close the mesh. But that's not a problem for the shape matching element method. We can still test the effect of different materials on the ability of our rocket ship to land successfully. We can even handle more complicated designs like this.